Hi, the Mud Broker here. Today I'm going to be making sauerkraut. I picked some cabbages out of my garden. These are all ready to go. And the recipe for sauerkraut is dead simple. It's just cabbage and salt. But there is a little bit of technique involved to it. And before we get underway, I'm going to have a drink to my patrons on Patreon. I'm going to have a little blackberry brandy. My patrons are Kay's Kissed, Benedict Riggers, Joy Jones, Damian Bamer, Leo, Theodore Engelke, Valentin Tolman, Rudy Valvano, and Kiasby. And hopefully by the time you see this, because it takes about six weeks to make sauerkraut, there'll be others on the list for my video then. In the meantime, here's to you guys, and thank you much for your support. Like I said, sauerkraut is simplicity itself. I've already weighed these, and for every five pounds of cabbage, you need three tablespoons of salt. These actually weigh about seven pounds. They're going to lose a bit when I take the cores out and cut them up. Now, I simply cut them into quarters. And that'll leave just a little chunk of core in each one and cut that out. Then I cut them about the thickness of a dime. Now if you have a food processor or a mandolin or something of that sort, you can cut them thinner. But I like my sauerkraut a little bit thick. So cutting them with a knife works just fine. Once this is all fermented, I'm going to show you how to can it, which is pretty easy too. But in the meantime, I'll shut the camera off and get all of my cabbage cut up. I'll see you in a little bit. I have my cabbage all cut up. I got my three tablespoons of salt. I have another bowl which is sitting on my scale, which you can't see underneath the bowl. Start off by sprinkling a little bit of salt in the bottom of your bowl and start adding cabbage. Add some cabbage. Give it a good sprinkle in the salt. And you keep adding cabbage and salt and layering it as you go until we reach five pounds of cabbage. A little chunk of core there. And there's five pounds. Got a little bit left over. That's good. I'll make some coleslaw out of it later. Sprinkle the rest of the salt on. And set this aside. Yep, definitely five pounds. And then give it a good mixing around. Break up any big chunks. Toss that around good. And then we'll let it set for an hour and let the salt draw some of the moisture out of the cabbage. After this is set for an hour, we'll come back and get on to the next phase of sauerkraut making. My cabbage has been sitting for a little over an hour, salted down, and it's wilted quite a bit. It's gotten smaller and it's softened it up quite a lot. And that is important for our next stage. Because our next stage is going to require a little bit of specialized equipment. First of all, you'll need a sauerkraut stomper. Yeah, they actually call them that. This one's made out of a chunk of Schedule 80 PVC pipe with a cap on it, and it works great. You're also going to need something to ferment your sauerkraut in. For a small batch like this, a one gallon glass jar works very nicely. You also have to exclude air as much as possible from the process. You can fill a plastic bag with water and set it on top of the sauerkraut once you have it packed in the jar 
and that does a fairly good job of keeping the air out. But I prefer something that works a lot better. I use a winemaking airlock like this and I have a this is a bulkhead fitting which I've cut into the lid of the jar and there's a rubber stopper which goes into there and the airlock goes into there like that. Works very well. For bigger batches they also make fermentation crocks. It's basically a crock which has a gutter around the inside edge and there's a lip on the lid which fits down in the gutter. You set the lid on, you pour water in it and the gutter full of water does the same thing as a fermentation lock does. It keeps the air from getting back in but it allows pressure to escape. Anyway, what I'm going to do now is start putting the cabbage in the jar. Do it a little bit at a time add a small layer, get her in there, and then stomp it down real good. You want this packed in there nice and tight. Keep adding and stomping, and before long you'll have your jar full. I'll spare you having to watch the entire process, but you get the idea. Get your sauerkraut in there, stomp the hell out of it, and I'll be back in a minute. I put the last handful of cabbage in my jar, got everything stomped down good. Any liquid left in your bowl, go ahead and pour that on there. Now in theory, you're supposed to get enough juice from the cabbage itself for this process to work right, but I found that's usually not the case. I almost always have to add water, in fact I always do. Uh, five pounds We'll fill your gallon jar about that far. What you need to do now is cover the top of this with something. I've got an old plastic lid off a thing that I cut up and it works pretty good but one of these days I'll get around to making something better. And you put that in there because that'll give me a base for my fermentation weight to sit on. You'll need to weight this down with something. In an earlier video I showed you how I made my fancy schmancy little fermentation weight, so if you want to know how to do that, go look back through my videos and you'll see how. Get any little bits on the side down into the rest of it. Put the weight on. Give her a little squeeze. And then I add water so that everything is covered good and it's maybe a half inch or so, three quarters of an inch, above the level of the cabbage inside the jar. Now as this sits, between the weight and the fermentation, the weight will sink down more and you'll draw more liquid out of there, but you want to start off with more than enough water to cover what you got in there. And that ought to do it. It's not going to show very well when I tip it to the side, but I'm about an inch or so above my uh, little plate in there. All you gotta do now is put the lid on, screw it down tight, put a little bit of water in the airlock thingy. You'll want to use bottled water for this. Iron is the mortal enemy of just about anything that's fermented. If you have iron in your water, it will make your sauerkraut turn nasty. Temperature is fairly important. You want to keep this at about 65 to 70 degrees. Too cold, it'll work too slow, and it can turn bad. Too hot, it'll work too fast, and it turns nasty, soft, and slimy. So right about room temperature works really good. As long as you don't have too big of swings all the time, you'll be okay. We're going to let this sit for a couple of days and start fermenting. I'll show you that. But other than that, this is going to take about six weeks for this to ferment all the way through, and then I'll be ready to can it. And I'll see you in a few days when this has started fermenting. Welcome back. This was actually done in the middle of November. That was when six weeks passed after I had put this in the jar. Right now it's 
New Year's Day. So I've been a little bit busy in the meantime and haven't got around to canning this. I'm going to water bath can this on my wood stove and you might be able to hear something simmering in the background. I'm prepping my jars, getting them scalded and boiled because you have to be very scrupulous with sterilizing your jars and equipment when you're water bath canning. But anyhow, what I'm going to do is take the weight off of this and leave it sit for about an hour, which will give it some time for the liquid to reabsorb a little bit into the sauerkraut. I can just grab this right here. I'll get that off of there. We'll leave this sit for a little while and I'll be back when I'm ready to jar it up and start canning. All right, I've got everything prepped and ready to go. I boiled my jars for a half an hour. I turned the heat off, let them quit boiling, but they're still sitting in the hot water. Like I said, you want to keep everything scrupulously clean when you're water bath canning. I got my jars ready to go. I dipped some of the hot water out of the pot into the pan I have the lid sitting in and they've been scalded good. Normally you just have to put them in a little warm water for a few minutes but it's best off if you scald them good when you're water bath canning. So I'm ready to go. I'll grab a jar out of the pot. And I'm going to dry the inside of the jar off because I have quite a bit of iron in my water and if I just let it dry on its own it'll leave some iron residue inside of the jar and I don't want that but I'm not worried about the outside because that'll just get more on it when I can it and that'll all get cleaned off tomorrow when everything is cooled off and sealed at any rate you take your still warm jar and you start filling it with the sauerkraut really use my funnel for this that's why I got it out filled up with the sauerkraut you want to leave one half inch head space we're going to pack this in here a little bit with my sauerkraut stomper if you remember that from earlier in the video pack it down good you don't need it super super tight but you want to give it a fairly good compacting a little bit more a half inch. Set this aside. I'm going to dip out a little bit of the juice just to kind of top off the jar and get it up to that last half inch. Just to make sure everything's covered. Set this aside and where's my magnet? I'll grab a lid, put that on, Oh, I forgot to debubble it. You got to get the bubbles out. But with something like this, if you just go poking around with your little debubbling tool, it doesn't really do a very good job. What works best is squeezing it down a little bit with your stomper, and that will work the air bubbles out very nicely. Put my lid on, put a ring on it finger tight. Both finger tight. And I'll set it in here. Once I get the rest of these jarred up, get everything moved over to the wood stove, I'll be back and we'll take the next step. You know what else I didn't do? Those of you who have canned before probably noticed it. I forgot to wipe the rim of my jar off. So, wipe the edge of my jar off. And now, I'll get a different lid, put that on, and now that is ready to can. Don't forget to wipe the rim of your jar off. Okay, got my can around the wood stove and it's up to a nice full roll and boil. The hottest part of the stove right now is towards the back, but I gotta move it forward to load it up. Boiling along real good. And that five pounds of cabbage made 11 half pint jars of sauerkraut.
So we'll get these guys loaded up there. I'm going to have a couple of batches to run. But I'll get these in. And once this comes back to a boil, I'll start timing. It's 20 minutes for pints and half pints and 25 minutes for quarts. Alrighty, the time is up and we're going to see something here. I'm a bit concerned because I smell sauerkraut. You don't want to smell what you're canning. Yeah. I don't think that one's going to seal. Anyway, I'll get the rest of these out and uh, I will change my water. Then I can run them last few through. I think I know why the bottom came out of that jar. I got a batch of brand new jars a couple years ago. It must have been a bad batch because I had about five out of a dozen break the bottoms out just like that one did. I thought the ones that had survived would be good, but there must have been at least that one there that wasn't. So. Like I said, I'll change my water out and uh, do the last four jars I have sitting here. Now the jars were fairly warm when I put them in there because I had kept them warm while I was waiting for this to come to a boil. So I don't think it was just thermal shock. That can definitely happen if you put cold jars into hot water. Like I say, I had problems with some of these half pint jars breaking before. Anyway. That's canning on a wood stove. Probably not the very best demonstration, but you get the idea. I hope you enjoyed the video and even the disastrous part, and I'll see you later.